Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good vibes, good energy, good people. It's your boy Mickey Fenty, aka Mickey Made It. If you're new to this channel, you know what to do to this channel. Subscribe right now. Also, if you want to support my brand, it's Inspired by Dreams. Dot shop. We got everything. Hoodies, snapbacks, everything for you to get your drip on and dressing outside of the box. Okay, today's episode, we got to get into this. When it comes to community, when it comes to families, there's a lot of issues that we all deal with. And today we're just breaking down generational traumas. Mickey made it. Mickey made it. What you made, Mickey? Forget about the way it used to be. This is not a damn democracy. We are in a state of emergency, and my word is law. Generational trauma is crazy because, get this, my sister and I, who are complete opposite people, always have been in values, beliefs, hobbies, self-expression, overall aesthetic, completely opposite, are now starting to come to the realization that we have had or are reflecting on our past. And there are a lot of similarities that we are currently experiencing with one, if not both, of our parents. She's starting to figure it out a little after I've figured this out for the last few years. She's a Christian, so she calls it generational sin. I call it generational trauma. We're both very aware, like we cannot have this continue anymore. But what do you think that says when two completely different siblings start to realize that they have similar experiences with one or both parents? Like, what do you think the common denominator is? Just because I twerk, just because I wear certain clothes, and just because I'm young doesn't mean I would be a bad mom. I literally just watched a video of a 17 year old saying that, who's pregnant, having a child, right? Soon to be a mother. And that is one of the many reasons why I do not congratulate children for having, young, for having babies young. There's nothing to celebrate, right? Supporting you and helping you get what you need to be the best mom that you can be, but we're not celebrating. This is not a celebration, right? We don't realize that we are our children's first teachers, their first role models. So if you don't think that all you do is twerk your behind and wear certain clothing and behave certain ways, that that is not a form of bad parenting because you're setting the example, you're insane. But unfortunately, this is a 17 year old who thinks this way. This is the same way that grown women think. They don't think that has no correlation on their parenting, none. Their kids are watching and they think, oh, well, it's not, there's no reflection of who I am as a mom. Yes, it is because your kids are learning from you. Who they become as an adult, who they become, you know, their characteristics, their behaviors, they're learning it and watching it from their parents. They're watching. And children having children have no idea. They don't get it. But this is the reality where we are. This is what it is. I have a transactional mother. She's not going to text me to see how my day is going or how I'm feeling. She's not going to inquire about how business is going this week and whether or not I'm happy in my role as a therapist and life coach. She's going to hit me up because she needs something. She's going to text me and when I open that text message, even though I may want to hear I love you and I just wanted to say that I miss you very much, it's going to be like, hey, can you buy this off of Amazon for me, even though I've showed her 10,000 times how to do it herself. She's not going to prioritize me when it comes to holiday season because she has things to do and she values other things more than she values family time. After all, she's a business owner, so holidays mean big money where she's at. So why would she take off to spend Christmas and Thanksgiving with her only daughter? I have a transactional mother. That's how she is. It's who she is. And I no longer look at the way she is as a reflection of who I am because I have a lot of heartfelt connections with wonderful people who see me for who I am. Not, they don't see me as a butler or chat GPT. My mom treats me like I'm chat GPT. She comes to me with questions and she expects answers. And God forbid I ever make a point that she doesn't connect deeply enough with me, she's going to say, I don't know where I went wrong. I did everything I could, blah, 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 blah. She should have hired a butler, not had a daughter. <laughs> What's worse is I have a transactional mother that has a better relationship with my brother. But I already made a TikTok about that. I'm not going into detail with that. 
I'm making this video because I have 16 messages and I felt super overwhelmed just looking at it. And then I reminded myself, I have a transactional mother. I can respond when I'm ready to. If you can say that you have a transactional parent, I pray you have similar boundaries where you realize, I ain't gotta respond right now. I'm not ready, I don't feel like it. I will come to you when I'm ready. I hope you have a similar boundary. I hope you don't feel pressured to respond right away. You are not chat GPT, babes. You are not chat GPT. Make sure, no matter how transactional your parent is, whenever you feel that guilt, you remind yourself that it's only because you're familiar with having to respond in this way. They raised you in, a, in an environment of urgency when they had a need because they selfishly wanted you to meet that need. Instead of realizing I don't have everything I need to parent properly and I need to figure out a way to, to, to you know, uh, make up for this and compensate for this, they made it your responsibility. And that's why a lot of us became adults at early ages. I have a transactional parent. I know all about it. This generation fucked up. Each one have depression, taking pills and anxieties. This is a great example of how intergenerational trauma occurs, especially true for racialized people. Because immigrant parents have had to go through oftentimes horrific realities, the assumption is that things are not that bad when you move to a place like North America. Why would you have depression? Why would you have anxiety? Why would you be suffering from symptoms of trauma? What's missing is that immigrant parents don't realize that that shouldn't be normalized. The horrific experiences that they had aren't normal and shouldn't be normal. Because this opinion is so prevalent and racialized in immigrant communities, oftentimes people don't know when their problems are serious enough to get help. What you mean you 16, you got a full sleeve of tattoos and your mama let you smoke a vape? The grandma is the baby and also she's 45 seriousness it's the parents it's always the parents i like this creator's video because she's like your mom's letting you do that and yes there are generations of people who just have what other people would describe as like negligent parenting but because they don't think it's a problem the way they were raised they go on to raise their children in the exact same way like in high school i knew people or was friends with people although i couldn't like actually tell my parents i was friends with them for the same reason that she put in her video people whose parents let them rip and run like they were grown they didn't have a curfew they didn't have to do their homework Work. They could sleep at their boyfriend's house. Their significant other could stay over even though they were underage. Their parents bought them alcohol, but some of their parents might even let them in the house or with them. Some of their parents let them get pissed drunk on vacation. I knew a girl whose parents let her move in at 15 with their boyfriend. Kids aren't getting worse. Actually, every statistic about um, millennials when they were young in high school and Gen Z will probably be the same for Gen Alpha, shows that teen pregnancy, drug use, underage drinking, they're all down. People are becoming sexually active at older ages now. That's very different in comparison to our parents well, depending on how old your parents are and our grandparents age. So it's not like some widespread generational issue despite people like hand wringing in the comments like, oh my God, teen cultures dot no. But the culture of parents who just kind of think like, oh, well, my kid's a freshman in high school now, you know, they get to live like they're 18. That's gonna continue. I just feel like that's a really big part of your 20s, like realizing that a lot of it just comes down to your parents, whether that's fair or not. And it's really unfair for the kids who have bad parents, but like, yeah, a lot of your high school experience and how well you do in school depends on your parents staying on you about getting good grades or putting in the work to sit down with you at night and make sure your homework is done or putting in the work to make sure that you're not ripping and running in these streets like you're grown and preventing you from getting into some really bad situations. And then also a big part of it is just how many people don't actually want kids in the first place. Like they wanted a baby, they wanted a toddler, but then it's really annoying to deal with a person with thoughts and feelings. So it's just kind of easier to be like, mm, you're grown enough. You're grown enough, you know, until you can actually legally be out of my house. I'm just gonna let you do what you want because they don't want to do the work anymore. I'm just having a hard time hearing from the parents of the generation who responded to our crying by telling us that they didn't want to hear it and to stop or they would give us something to cry about. Now cry about the fact that they don't hear from us. If you're black, African-American, African, or your children of immigrant parents, you need to listen to this. When I saw this, I was like, dang, bro. We really gotta do better, bro. So let me let me get to it. So boom, I'm at work. I'm a cashier for real. So I be ringing people up. So I'm ringing up this black guy and his daughter. And they come to the line, they got their own bag. So boom, I start ringing their stuff up. I'm scanning, scanning, scanning. And then I ring up a glass jar of salsa or like dip or something. Like I think it was like queso dip or something. I don't remember. So I put it to the side. 
I guess the little girl was trying to help, but she ends up making it fall. And then you hear the sound of the glass just breaking instantly. I turned around, stopped what I was doing. As soon as it hit the floor, the little girl starts crying. She's emotional. And mind you, this is pretty stereotypical of me, but in my experience, every single time that this happens and it's a black parent and it's a black family, they start yelling, talking about, why did you do that? Like, you're doing too much. Step to the side, go over there. They start cussing out the kid, yelling at them. But this guy didn't do that. He said, oh, don't cry. It's okay. You know, we'll just clean it up. It's a mistake. Everyone makes mistakes. The way he just handled that and the way he talked to her, he was gentle and patient. Even though the girl was crying, he never once told her to stop crying. Not once. He was patient throughout the whole time. And as I'm ringing up, bro, I just was watching how he was comforting her through how she felt. And I was like, bro, if only, oh my God, if only people like us of our color, immigrant parents, they all knew how to do this, bro. Could you imagine how the world would be, bro? And I say that to say this, we as the next generation need to do better. We need to break the generational curses that our parents still have and have given to us. It's our job to end that, shit. whether it's financial, psychological, emotional, spiritual, cultural. We have to break it, bro. It ends with us. We got to make sure we pass down sh to our children that will benefit them and that doesn't repeat the cycle. This truly amazed me, bro. Like, we, we really got to do better. I'm not going to lie to you. Please don't allow your poisonous mother to turn you into her copy. It will never get better with a toxic mother, no matter how hard you try. The problem is your mother, not you. She will not improve or change. The earliest you escape, you will have more chances to save your sanity. One day, this will wreck your social behavior, your relationships, and your communication with other people, and might destroy your life. No one chooses his parents, and kids are not responsible for what happened in their parents' life. You can't fix your mother, and it's not your work to deal with it. One thing I can tell you from my own experience is that single mothers are the most possible candidates for poisonous parents. Your mother is damaged and poisonous, but that doesn't mean you have to take her poison. The only toxin that can hurt you are the ones you let in. Poisonous people are people in pain regardless of whether they admit it to themselves or to others. My advice to you is to live your own best life and try to find forgiveness within yourself. Your decision to go no contact with your family of origin is 100% the right decision. I wish somebody had made this video for me back in 2007 when I went no contact with my mother. So. I'm here to tell you everything I have learned going no contact with my family of origin and some hot tips to help you uh, get through the holiday season going no contact. Okay, so first of all, you might even be doubting your wanting to go no contact. You might be saying things like, I don't know, was it that bad? Maybe I'm being overly dramatic. Maybe I'm being like, uh, maybe I'm the a-hole here. I'm here to tell you if you're even doubting wanting to have a relationship with your parents or somebody in your family, it's probably because there's something awful there, especially with mothers and fathers. Children want to have a bond with their parents. So if you don't want that, something is wrong on a primal level. And we've been gaslit our whole lives, right? Like my dad would tell me like, Oh, you don't have a problem. You don't have, what, what you're crying for. You're depressed, I'm depressed. Like I've been told that I shouldn't have feelings about anything my whole life. So of course, when you have a strong feeling like wanting to get away from these people, you will doubt yourself. So A number one, don't doubt these feelings. It's 100% valid. And if you're ever feeling like, gosh, I'm, I feel guilty, because that's gonna be a huge one. You might feel guilty that you don't wanna be around your family of origin. This thought always helped me. 
which was, would I ever let the mailman, a stranger on the street, a bus driver, whoever, talk to me the way my own parents would talk to me? No, hard no, hard pass. I don't even let strangers on the street treat me as crummy as the way my own family did. So whenever you're having doubts or maybe you're feeling guilty, just keep that in mind. Okay, and going into the holidays, expect that other people in your family will probably not understand your decision to go no contact. And maybe it's because they did not have the same relationship with this person that you're separating from that you, you had a different relationship with your mother than say your aunt, your cousins or whomever. So maybe they can't even understand why. Um, but here's some hot tips and here's a great comeback I had when people would say things to me like, oh my goodness, you're not talking to your mother um, on Christmas? Oh no, but she's gonna be all alone. And I would go, yes, you're absolutely right. My mother is going to be all alone. In fact, here's her phone number. Why don't you call her and hang out with her if you like her so much? Another thing you might feel over the holidays when you're no contact with uh, your mother or your father is the guilt. Like, oh my gosh, they're alone for the holidays. How will they survive? Okay, here's one thing I've learned. If you're not there for that person to abuse, they'll just find another person to torture. It's just that simple. The minute I stop being around for my mother, to you know, berate me, criticize me, tell me I wasn't good enough, I'm too fat, I'm too ugly, I'm too this, I'm the most neglectful daughter. The minute I was like, okay, I'm done, she just found somebody else to, uh, to leech onto and be awful to them. So don't worry, for some reason, these people are extremely resourceful and they will find another supply, another person to, uh, to treat just as poorly as they did you. So don't, don't you feel guilty for leaving them. It's not your job to be somebody's punching bag. Oh, and another thought, go, girls who go no contact with their mother suffer. I, I Look, I just think it was a, it's so against the forces of nature for a girl not to speak to her mother. And if you ever have doubts are like, oh my gosh, should I go back to mommy? And then mommy hasn't done the work. Cause sometimes, I, sometimes, sometimes parents can do the work, get into therapy, change, get better. And you can have a relationship with them. That is totally possible, okay? Sometimes that's not possible. And when that's the scenario and you feel guilty for not being with that mom, I want you to watch the movie, Grey Gardens. Anytime I felt bad about being no contact with my crazy borderline schizophrenic mother, I would watch that movie and poor Edith, I think that was her name, right? The, the daughter, I would just be like, oh my gosh, that totally could have been me because uh, it's really easy for daughters and mothers to become enmeshed. And listen, you gave these people the first 18 years of your life. Do not give them the rest of your life. You deserve that to build and create and be whomever it is you want to be without being abused and tortured and, and criticized. It's just, it's just terrible. Okay, one last thought. <sighs> People who don't understand going no contact with their family will say things to you like, oh, oh my gosh, you're not speaking to your mom or your dad. Well, one day they're gonna die and you're really going to regret it. My mom died in 2015. So far, no regrets. It's been the most healing, <laughs> wonderful thing. Sadly, uh, that's happened to me in this journey of getting better and healing from my childhood. So in my world, I have no regrets about going no contact. Now, is it sad? that I had to do that? Absolutely. And will I always carry some level of sadness for never having had a normal relationship with my mom? Yeah, absolutely. And that's just my bag in life. And unfortunately, most of us have stuff 
that we carry around and deal with. But regret? Hell no. Hell no. And like I said, there's those rare occasions where parents do change and grow and become better and like maybe you can have a relationship with them, but I will never ever regret saving my life over being there for my mom to abuse and, you know, to be her punching bag. That is not a life for you. So again, I, I, I just want to make this video for anybody that's like, I know the holidays are coming and it's a bummer when you can't be with your family of origin. I haven't been with my family of origin in, I don't know, 10, 15 years, but what I, what I wanted to share with you is that your decision to go no contact, absolutely. If you feel it, do it, just do it. And by the way, a normal, nice parent, like if my kids, when they grow up were to be like, hey mom, I don't wanna to talk to you anymore. Do you know what my reaction would be? Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Have I hurt you in any way? I'm so sorry. What can I do to repair this relationship? Now, when you split with a toxic parent, their reaction is what, defensiveness? You're a piece of shit. Why are you? You're abandoning me. No, no, no. So that should tell you something that your decision is absolutely right. And these people are in fact abusive because we don't always know. It's kind of a weird thing when you grow up in abuse. You don't really know you're being abused until you're out of it and you're healthy and you're in therapy and you're like, oh yeah. Oh, oh, that was child abuse or that was really fucking weird that my mom you know, wouldn't let me have friends over. Why? Because then they might see that our life is weird and I might tell somebody or whatever. So zero regrets, take care of yourself and make a holiday that makes sense for you. I, um, yeah, I, I now celebrate with my in-laws whom I adore, I love them. And I'm, I'm just blessed to have my own family that I put my energy and my love into and not my family of origin who will suck that valuable energy and space that I'm now giving to my children to make their lives better. I know this video is super long. I wanted to get this out there before Thanksgiving, before I'm actually gonna leave and, and go for a week. But anyway, I hope you're having a great holiday and uh, thank you so much for watching these videos. I'm really enjoying making these and um, okay, talk to you later, bye. There were um, generational curses that bled into my generation when it was time for me to be raised and things that I'm trying to unlearn and and forgive and forget you know that are really hard to um, and as an adult you try to be empathetic to your parent because you know that they were only doing what they were taught you know so it's like a it's a double-edged sword where you're trying to be, understand like, I know you were the way you were because of how your parents were to you. And that's all you knew. You were doing the best you could, but now I'm fucked up. 95% of trauma is multi-generational. It's just how it works. We unwittingly pass it on. Whatever was passed on to you happened through your parents and through your parents' experience in life, which they hadn't quite resolved by the time they had you. That's how I would say that the multi-generation was passed on. And a lot of, you know, sometimes, Gave some people down, but I had a perfectly happy childhood, you know? And uh, that usually takes me about three minutes to sort that one out. I think the more people understand their own traumas, the more see with clear eyes the traumas of others. Having black parents felt like I was born in this world on survival mode hard. So many black parents need to decolonize their parenting strategies because a lot of the parenting strategies, especially the ones that use violence, both physical and emotional, stems from slavery. There's so much generational trauma within the black household. And I love that I'm seeing younger generations of black people interrogate that a lot more with their children. I think a lot of older generations obviously knew that this world hates black people. And so their instinct was to go into tough love, which didn't even feel like love, it's just abuse because I thought that it would give us better survival in the real world. Also, they were just trying to survive themselves in this world that hates black people. I've been thinking about this a lot this past week, but growing up, like I did not get love, obviously. It more so felt like I was living with like two coworkers who were above me in their position. And they didn't get love from their parents and then their parents didn't get love from their parents.
friends. So what did I expect? A lot of y'all need to decolonize yourself before you go out here having kids. Did you know that you can inherit your parents, your great grandparents, your great great grandparents trauma? When we discuss generational trauma, we don't often tackle the very important factor of epigenetics. And quite honestly, if you're not in the field of science and or research, um, healthcare, community healthcare, mental health, um, psychology, you may not have heard of the term epigenetics at all. So let me try to briefly break down why it's important to study epigenetics while also trying to unravel your own generational trauma. So epigenetics is exactly what it sounds like. Epi, the prefix, simply means the environment around you. Genetics is the makeup of your DNA. So how does epigenetics tie in to generational trauma? So generational trauma is the effect of trauma that has happened to a person. And that trauma that that person carries transmits from one generation to the next. Some examples of events that may occur in an individual's life that in response will cause trauma would be war and conflict, slavery and oppression, natural disaster, abuse and domestic violence, the Holocaust. When those events occur, a person who is experiencing that will often have a psychological, emotional and or behavioral response to that event and those responses often transmit through the DNA of their offspring. And that is how generational trauma develops. So epigenetics directly correlates with generational trauma in that the trauma will embed itself in your genes and it will change your genetic expression causing that genetic expression to be passed down through generations. So the psychological and biological effects of generational trauma can represent as mental health challenges such as anxiety, substance abuse, um, PTSD, and depression. So now we have multiple generations of people who have developed coping mechanisms and behavioral adaptations that stem from unresolved trauma. These coping mechanisms and behavioral adaptations affect family dynamics. So then you have parents who are pushing this parenting style that no longer serves them because the parenting style is impacted by the unresolved trauma. So not only do we operate in generational trauma on a micro level family dynamic, but also on a cultural level. And that is termed cultural transmission of trauma. So through memory of stories, um, lived and shared experiences, traditions that we normalize, but they're not necessarily healthy or serve us. Those are cultural transmitted traumas. Okay, so what I'm about to say, this is going to apply to everyone. Um, so when you re when we're coming up and we're being raised i'm gonna just i'm just gonna give it a new phrase i would call it training wheel learning and training wheel learning is you know how you're raised and what people want you to to just learn on their time and it doesn't even have to be when you're young even when you you can be training wheel learning all the way up to your to adult to your adulthood applying for a job all the things that they throw at you to learn to better their, them or their business. But there's also a time in your life where you have to start learning for yourself. Take those training wheels off of your learning and start learning the things that's going to benefit you as a person. And start cutting the ties on the things that you might have been brought up upon and you know you don't want to carry it on with you. And once you make that decision and start separating the two, the, early, the earlier you do it, the better you're off. So you guys let me know, you know, this generational trauma, Have are you going through it? Have you been through it? Are you dating somebody that's, you know, coming from it? You guys let me know what you feel about this whole video and leave your comments down below. Make sure you tune into my morning show on Monday, Wednesdays, and Friday. That's at 9 a.m. Love you guys. And I, until next time, it's your boy Mickey Fenty, a.k.a. Mickey Made It. If 
you're new to this channel, you know what to do to this channel. Subscribe right 